Microsoft is experimenting with a really interesting way of packaging web applications for desktop deployments. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at Web View. Web Window. Web Window? Web Window, yeah. yeah. That's much better than Web View. It's a different thing entirely. Which, under the covers, is kind of a, a wrapper to Web View 2, which is kind of more deep into the how this thing works. But uh, basically, Steve Sanderson, the, the guy who created Blazor, is is up to it again with another experiment that uh, really I, I find quite interesting for, for a number of reasons. But uh, basically the idea is to to try to create a way to host uh, like an HTML-based or web-based application in a cross-platform uh, desktop, as a cross-platform desktop application in a way that doesn't bring all of the bloat of something like Electron. So... Electron is a way that you can do that. That's how uh, Visual Studio Code, for example, is built, and a lot of other uh, very popular tools are built using Electron. Uh, but it bundles up Node.js and Chromium, and that's that ends up being quite uh, quite a big package at the end of the day that you need to deploy to, to the clients to deploy this application. And uh, it's it bloats in in a couple of ways. There's the in terms of the size of the files you're you're sending out, but also in the the memory usage electron apps are kind of notorious for requiring a lot of memory. So Slack is the other very common electron based app. And between Slack and Visual Studio Code, you end up needing gigabytes of memory to to run these apps. So what Steve is experimenting with is this this package called Web Window that allows you to well, I'm just gonna start by a quick with a quick demo here before I get into the how it works. So what you do is you start with just a .NET Core console app, which sounds weird, uh, but let's just roll with it for a minute. I like your ever-changing background. Yeah, it's one of those Windows themes you can install through the, the uh, Windows Store. Mm -hmm. I kind of change them seasonally. They're fun. Okay, so there's a NuGet package that that we install here called Web Window. We have to make sure you have include pre-release there because this is very much a, just an experimental thing. They're not committed to it yet and don't know if it's something they're going to move forward with, but uh, definitely don't build and deploy apps with this just yet. Uh, but the once you have that package in here, what you can do is just create a new Web Window instance here. So I can say window equals new web window monsters app and then you just tell it to navigate to some something so navigate to string for example we could just give it some text and that's just going to render whatever html you throw in there yeah so it's going to render it in a browser object kind of thing. And then you just tell it window dot wait for exit. And that's it. So I run this and it should render that H1 tag for me. And what that does is it kind of depend it's a little bit different what it does depending on what uh, so there's my app. Depends what OS you're on, what that actually ends up doing. So in Windows, what it does is it it uses the new Oh, what's it called? The WebView 2, which is a, a component that wraps the new Chromium-based edge. Um, so it's it's the it's edge under the under the covers, but it's the one version that's just deployed to your to your application. Or so there's, there's the no other extra right. installs or any other payload that needs to go with your app. This is just using OS level rendering. Yeah. So if we go to publish this, just to see what actually gets published, and I'll just do a, oh, to Azure Web Jobs, no, cancel. Oh, I'm just going to publish to a folder, so this is the same as doing a .NET publish on the command line. And just to go see what that looks like now. Uh, Second from the bottom. 
My goodness, I, I feel like it's I in a different never, place every I time I go there. Me too, I can never find it. <laughs> Glad it's not just me. Okay, so what gets deployed here is just my EXE and the web window DLL. Like these are super small. And this this is what's interesting to me with this because um, you know, just the packet the size of the packages we deploy has gotten kind of out of control sometimes. Um, oh, and let me tell you about updating something on Xbox. <laughs> right. <laughs> Every time I sit down to use my Xbox, it's yeah. like 38 gigabytes. What, yeah. what is in that? <laughs> so when this really hit me was uh, a few months back, a, a client asked me to build them a, just a really simple utility kind of application that did some stuff with XML files. And they were Windows only. So I, I created a Windows Forms application for them, which was something I hadn't done in a really long time. And it didn't need any external dependencies. It was all just, you know, .NET full framework kind of stuff. And I go to deploy it to them and it's literally just a single EXE that is less than 100K. It was like 32K EXE that I send them and that's the whole application. And that just like never happens anymore. We've gone so far the other direction with the packages that we deploy that they contain just like a ton of stuff that, you know, what is in there? Yeah, yeah. our our uh, bin folder for the uh, for the bake shop website is like 48 megs. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's crazy. So that's kind of interesting that it just relies on. So you can choose to bundle the stuff into. You could choose to bundle the the framework in and do the usual uh, choices that you have with publishing a .NET Core application. But if you're just doing like a, where you're depending on the framework being installed on the machine and everything, it's a really nice small file. So that's just navigating to a string, but something else we could do is tell it to navigate to a URL. So we could, for example, just have it go to our website. And that should render out our, our site here in a... Ooh, look at that. The big window because I'm dragging it from my 4K screen, but there's our our site all wrapped nicely in a in a little app here. It's responsive and everything. Yeah, and it's I mean it's hmm. rendering with Chromium under the covers there, so it's the Edge version of uh, the Chromium based Edge, which is the the new one with the nice little hmm. surfing icon there. And I, I saw that the third option there for the web view was to, to load it from a file. So if you had a web mm -hmm. application, like an Angular app or a view app or something, you could bundle it in with this? Yeah, and that's where things get really interesting. So the reason that Steve was experimenting, I think the reason he was experimenting with this initially was uh, that they've been toying around with the idea of deploying Blazor applications mm -hmm. in things like Electron or some other you know, client that can be deployed as a desktop app cross-platform. Uh, but they don't really like how bloated it is with with yeah. Electron. They're trying to kind of shrink the size of that. And uh, one of the ideas then is that you could actually host a Blazor application use it in this way. And I have a sample loaded, which is just Steve's sample from his repo. I'll link to all the, his blog post in the GitHub repo here in the show notes. But what's interesting here is that it's just a standard Blazor application uh, with that includes a a dependency on webwindow.blazor. And then what you do on startup here is you just tell it uh, components desktop.run, so that's part of the webwindow.blazor. And you tell it just, uh, here's my index.html and run my Blazor app. Here's my startup class, and it will run the whole thing uh, packaged up as a desktop application. And what's really, really interesting about this is to me is that it's, uh, so typically when you were doing uh, if you're deploying a Blazor application to the browser, like if you were trying to run it in a browser, browser you'd be using WebAssembly. So you'd be using the the uh, Mono runtime, I suppose, and Mono.NET runtime, and loading uh, loading up that Blazor app in WebAssembly and running it there. Client side, what happens in this case is all the .NET code for the Blazor app actually runs in .NET Core, and we're only using what the the web view portion of web window to do the, the HTML side of it. So what that means is we have, ac we have access to more of the framework. So we have access to mm. not just the mono version of what's implemented for .NET 
uh, we have like the full .NET Core, full .NET Core. That sounds funny, <laughs> um, but that it's as it's almost like that server side model of Blazor. We're running the .NET Core on the server side. Now it's all running in that one process. So we have the .NET Core running in the process and the HTML rendering happening within that same process as well. So when we run this, this is just the the standard little sample here from of a Blazor application but running inside of this window. Wow, that's pretty cool. So and now you're writing you're writing C sharp code. Um, you're creating basically console app um, using a Blazor application and the whole thing ships in a pretty eensy tiny little package. Yeah, so let's take a look at what that published package looks like. Okay, so there's more here, obviously, because now it has all of the the Blazor stuff in here, but it's just the assemblies, right? Um, so it looks like it might be under a megabyte, though. It's it's pretty small. So this part is under, it, yeah, I think that part's under a megabyte. What makes it a little bit bigger is mm -hmm. in total here is that we have the the runtime stuff for Windows OS X and Linux. Uh, but overall, this whole package here, without zipping it up to send it out, is like 2.7 megs. So cross-platform, and that's cross-platform. Um, there's an exe here that I can run, and that just runs my app in a nice little window, just hmm. like it did before. And that's something that I can I can ship out to anybody who has .NET Core three installed and uh, the new version of of Edge installed. So if we scroll down and in his blog post here where he kind of compares some things. So if you look at the download size of you know, an Electron app in in Windows, it's like 60 megs, pretty similar across the, the other uh, platforms there. If we were to do a standalone one where we bundle the .NET framework in, looking at 30 megs, and if you do the, the version we did, it's like 0.8 megs, so, uh, and then 0.6 megs for, for the other like th that's tiny, right, compared to yeah. your standard Electron app. And memory usage is, is pretty interesting too. So uh, in Windows, it's still pretty high, and he attributes that mostly to its Chromium, the browser is Chromium-based under the covers, and it's a bit of a memory hog. So that part that's doing the, the rendering of the HTML is still using a fair bit of memory, but that's still a huge improvement. It's uh, even bigger improvement, I suppose, or getting to really nice small uh, memory usage on the other platforms. And that's just because they're using different browser technology to do the rendering. So, so on Mac OS X, using Safari, Linux is using a WebKit component, I believe. Okay. WebKit GTK. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Which I have no experience with. And yeah, on Mac, it's the WK Web View. Which is Safari. Hmm. So no idea if this is going to move forward, but I really hope it do. Much it do it does. It do. I sounded a lot like my two year old. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, you really realize how strange the English language is when a new human yeah. being is learning it. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 real weirdness got to me when I started calling my wife mom, right? Yeah. <laughs> ask, ask mom, hey, mom, are we at when, when supper? <laughs> Hang on a second, that's, that's my wife. <laughs> so this is really cool. Um, the sample I showed here kind of uh, assumes that the, the entire Blazor app, we kind of made the decision at the beginning that we were going to be deploying it this way. Uh, but it, Steve and his demo at .NET Conf Focus on Blazor this week uh, he did a demo where it was he just referenced like an existing Blazor application that was being deployed in another way. So you could just have an existing Blazor app, and then this is just another way that you could deploy it. So you just add another project that's like your desktop version, and it just references that existing Blazor application, pulls in all the stuff it needs to at build time, and uh, does does the magic it needs to to run it as a desktop app. So super cool. Do you know what? This would have been handy you know, like 20 years ago when you're working on a project on, on the, like a website and then y your boss said, Hey, can you make a desktop version? Yeah. No kidding. 
that would have been awesome. Yeah, it's super interesting. So it's a, it's a GitHub repo worth following just to see what happens to it. And uh, right now it's just, a, as I said, an experiment. But I, I see a lot of potential here, so I'm, I'm hoping it, it does move forward. Yeah, I'm hopeful anytime somebody comes up with a new kind of Windows-based technology that it will maybe be as awesome as WinApp. I mean, it's been a failure so far, but I, I think as technology progresses, uh, the likelihood that we'll be able to recreate the awesomeness that was WinAmp and WinAmp skins is increasing. Yep. Well, one last thing I thought I was done, but uh, one last thing to mention is that this isn't tightly coupled to Blazor either. So Steve has an example here where he built uh, a view app. So the, the web portion is all Vue.js. Uh, and it's interopping with with your .NET code here, and it's like a file explorer thing built in um, in Vue.js and .NET. Hmm. And I haven't tried running this, but I'm kind of curious. I want to see now that I mentioned it. So that that looks that's crazy. Let's see what it's doing here. Crazy is basically uh, yes, basically what Steve what Steve does. does. Yeah. Huh. So that's kind of interesting. Cool. It's like faster than that stupid native. Well, yeah. Aura. It does feel really fast, doesn't it? <laughs> it's crazy. I like it. This might be my new file explorer. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually just thinking about stuff where, you know, I, I mean, I don't have a use case for it right off the top of my mind, but when you've got stuff built up, a set of classes or whatever in a console app, and you want to just, I mean, maybe move away from um, what you're doing at the, on the command line, this feels like a really accessible way to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We this interop is probably something that would be a little bit annoying to do, but it being string based, but I mean, this is early yeah, days, so. so. Yeah, but I mean, that's, he's just parsing the, like, I mean, you could put classes around that and do a more intelligent parse, right? Yep. So you could still get full framework objects out of that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Super interesting. Excited to see where it goes. Indeed. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on this really interesting episode of the ASP Dev Answers. And we hope to see you all next week. In the meantime, if you have time to kill, uh, you can like, comment, share, republish, and uh, turn this podcast into a desktop application. <laughs> Mash on that subscribe button, people. <laughs> Bye. Bye.